Welcome everyone. We're going to get started on the speaking portion of our day. Did you guys have fun? Woo! Yeah, good. After the rain yesterday and kind of a little cloudy this morning, we had a really good day. So someone must have said like some really good prayers or something. Um, okay, so to introduce myself, I'm Emily Stuckey. I'm the CEO of Archway Institute and the founder of the National Peer Recovery Alliance. But above all, I'm a person in long-term recovery. To me, that means that I've not used drugs or alcohol as a way of coping with my mental health disorders for seven years now. Woo! Thank you, thank you. And we're going to, I'm gonna, because John Stokey, my husband, and also one of the founders, along with Dan and Jan of Archway, is not here, we can talk about him, right? Um, <laughs> I think if he were here, he'd probably say, look at me now, right? Um, he has 11 years of recovery under his belt. He's working for a pharmaceutical company selling a medication that he says saved his life when he struggled with addiction. His nonprofit is thriving, thanks to all of you guys and his mom and dad. <laughs> Thank you. And me a little bit. <laughs> And he um, he has me by his side, but he has a baby on the way too. So, yeah. so this is a baby bump, if you guys did not know. <laughs> so he would say, look at me now. I think so. Um, that is what, <laughs> that's what recovery does. Um, and that's what you guys are you guys are here to help with so we very much appreciate you we want to thank you for being here today thanks to all of our event sponsors that are going on the screen thank you to our hope fund sponsors who give year after year um thank you to our volunteers we always have a ton of volunteers for this event uh we definitely could not do it without you so thank you um big shout out to dan and jan because they are the event leads they they make this event a success And then maybe a last shout out to um, the Twin Isles Country Club. This is our, yes, this is our 10th year doing this event at this location. It gets bigger and better every year, um, in part because of Twin Isles and the work that they do. They are also Hope Fund sponsors. Um, they were a drop site for our underwear drive. So for today and every day, we, we appreciate Twin Isles very much. Um, thank you to our Boy Scouts who are here as well. There are volunteers, but I have to give them a shout out. So today's speaking looks a little bit different from years past. Years past, I've got up a little bit, um, and then we've had one speaker. Today we have a panel of speakers for you, so you don't have to listen to my voice the whole time. Um, and really we want to share with you a, a full picture of what Archway does every day, right? Um, our mission is really to be advocates for the individuals and families who are out there struggling with addiction and mental health disorders. Uh, we do that in four ways. One is education and awareness. Two is initial peer support and resource connection. Three is financial assistance through our advocates for hope, or through, through grants and scholarships. I'm messing up my words. And the fourth piece is um, now peer workforce development for peer support specialists through a division of Archway called the National Peer Recovery Alliance. So you're going to get a full, full picture of all of that, along with um, a few words from our community partners um, and the work that we do with them and the work that they do in the community. So I'm going to have Dan Stuckey pick, uh, kick us up on education and awareness. So it's pretty easy. You can follow along with this. You can see the bold ones, and then you can take a bite to eat while I'm talking, and then you can see the bold ones. So the first things, uh, we are advocates for individuals and families, which means we represent them. We're the neighbor you wish you had had, I wish we had had to, to help us on our journey. Um, but one of the first problems uh, in education and awareness, one of the first problems for Archway and folks is uh, uh, getting people to ask for help. It sounds simple, getting people to ask for help. Uh, in the U.S., one third of 
families in the U.S. are dealing with a loved one in their family with a drug or alcohol um, addiction disease. One third. Now, the next statistic is, will tell you the first thing Archway does. Only 20% of those families or individuals in their families ever ask for professional help. With the number one stigma being um, uh, us. <laughs> Really, they're, they're fearful of what their friends will say, their family will say, their employer will say. They're just fearful of the repercussions of saying they have a problem in their family. This, uh, the second stigma is they've lost total hope, usually by that time, that, that there's no out. So stigma and hope. So the first thing Archway does is we do tons of public speaking, uh, we do books, we do, um, like I was at Kiwanis Clubs, Jan and I was there, we, we've talked to churches, we do big national conferences, we just talk and talk, but there's two messages. One is we talk to tell people to help change the stigma, tell them they're not alone, and then tell them stories of hope. With the number one thing is they're not alone, and if they just come talk to us, we will help them um, navigate the system, uh, and that's what we do. Some of the things you see around here, as I told you about some of the places, kind of interesting, sorry about that, is the underwear drive. It, it, it sounds, it does serve a purpose. People really, uh, in the homeless treatment centers, recovery, need the underwear, but it also is a conversation starter, and we get a lot of people calling and asking for help uh, from around that. So it's actually an educational program for us. In Charlotte County, with all the PR we got um, in stocks, we had 79,000 impressions that we can calculate of people who we at least started a conversation and got them to think about the uh, recovery. So we do those things. We have a YouTube channel with over 250 <coughs> short videos because many people don't want to do it in public. They want to educate themselves in private. So that's the very first thing we do. We do it all for free. Uh, sometimes some of the organizations will give us a, a donation to help cover our costs, but we will fly people to just talk. First step, one, trying to get people to ask for help. And every time we do an education and awareness event, we seem to get more individuals and families that are reaching out asking for that help, right? So lowering that stigma. So that is why we have our Advocates for Hope program. That is our initial peer support and resource connection. Really, we get on the phone with people, let them know they're not alone, and then connect them to resources. But I'm gonna have Don, one of our newest board members here in Florida, share a little bit more about that. Well, good afternoon, everyone. And as Emily said, my name is Dawn Bellamarch, and I am very fortunate to be a board member on Archway's board. More than that, I have been a mental health and addiction treatment provider for the last 20 years. Um, I'm a licensed mental health provider, licensed drug and alcohol therapist in both Jersey and Florida. Um, and I have seen so many friends and family members impacted by addiction and mental health, a lot of them that are not around today to tell their story. So the mission of this organization is very powerful to me, it's very meaningful to me, and I am very excited to see so many people here to support. I am here to talk about the Advocates for Hope program, and one of the reasons I was really excited to be a part of Archway was because Archway is truly doing something different. Most organizations in the field of mental health and addiction provide treatment or recovery housing, and that is not what Archway or this program is doing. Really, this program is a support, a peer-based support for family and loved ones who have, a, who have a loved one that they are trying to get help or resources or access for. Anyone that answers, anyone that they speak to is someone that has a lived experience of mental health and addiction. And as a provider, I truly can't tell you how impactful that is to call the other end of a phone or to have someone talk with you that truly understands the experience as compared to someone who's trying to understand it. It's very, very impactful. Um, the families and who have walked this journey are obviously here to help train others and provide the resources. And even though they're not long-term professionals, 
it does help provide the, in, the immediate support that someone needs to either access care. We also give funds to support with some, in, some deductibles to get into treatment. I know that we've supported with first month rent at recovery houses. And we also give scholarships to housing and other organizations to provide scholarships to patients who may need access to care. Um, obviously, this is fully funded privately. So it requires everyone's support, not only in this room, but everyone that is a supporter of the Archway Institute and that wants to help people access the care that they need for long-term wellness and recovery. I did get some interesting notes, thanks Dan. <clears throat> um, the number one place that we get requests and call for help are Southwest Florida which for many, as a New Jerseyan, this was pretty stunning to hear because I think of other locations that I've been to as potentially higher need or more, less stigmatized in the talk, but really the number one calls are coming in from this region that you're sitting in. It's also coming from grandparents, it's coming from loved ones who are not just calling from maybe Southwest Florida for a relative from, that's here, but concerned about a loved one that they have in any part of the country. So this program is incredible. It provides a resource that, as a treatment provider myself, I can tell you is needed, is necessary, and will help people on their journey to recovery. Okay, that's for me. It's very unique, and I'm gonna pass it back to Emily to tell you how to do this. Thank you, Dawn. Um, so we've touched a little bit on um, educational awareness, Advocates for Hope, a little bit on our financial assistance or scholarships. I'm gonna to touch briefly on the National Peer Recovery Alliance or NPRA, and then we'll move to our lovely um, community partners as well. So um, NPRA was really started, it's a national network of peer support specialists. Um, really the focus is on workforce development for peers. So both Dan and, and Dawn have talked about peers a little bit. So what is a peer support specialist? Really, they are people with lived experience like me who've been trained and certified in order to help other people on their journey. So probably like 10 years ago when our tweet started, we didn't have the workforce that we have today of peer support specialists. We didn't have all the trainings um, and all the certifications and all, all the things for peers. And it's becoming a bigger and bigger workforce. Um, and so what we're trying to do is really help, just like any other workforce, you have to support support it, you have to help develop it, right? So that's what we're trying to do on a national scale and we really have two goals in that. So yes, we want to, we want to grow that workforce, we want to develop that workforce, we want to provide things like trainings and education for peers, a place for peers to go to network and share resources and best practices. Um, but we also want to, leverage that huge national network of peers to help more people find recovery. Um, I get calls from like Wisconsin and California and I don't know those areas, right? <laughs> Very well, but I do know people in those areas because of this national peer network. Since the end of last year, uh, we had about 700 followers on social media for NPRA. As of today, we have over 6,000 peers that are following us on social media. That means that there are 6,000 peers in this nationally who don't know, they're new to the workforce and they need that support and they're, they're hungry for that support. So we're excited to support them, but also um, help develop them so they can help answer some of our advocate for hope calls and, and things like that. So we can connect them directly to the people in their community who, who um, are doing the work. Um, so very exciting. The other thing I'll note just about that is right now Archway helps about, uh, we helped over 100 people through our Advocates for Hope. So those are individuals and families that need that um, initial peer support and resource connection, those conversations. Um, with this, we think we can help thousands. So that's really our goal with, with kind of investing in, in that workforce. Um, so that's a little bit about NPRA. I'm gonna move on to really our community partners. Um, one of our big beliefs at Archway is that in order to recover, um, an entire community of people have to come together in order to provide them with as many treatment and recovery resources as possible because if I went to treatment for 30 days, that wouldn't do much of anything, right? That would help, it would definitely help. 
but I need the things on the back end too. So I need treatment, but I also need counseling services. I also need recovery housing services. I also need recovery community organizations. You know, I need to be able to connect to my sheriff's department if possible. Um, so they can guide me to treatment, that kind of thing. <laughs> so we need all of these things to make recovery possible. And that's, you know, one of Archway's big beliefs and Archway has done a really good job in Southwest Florida of bringing together um, those community partners. So uh, I'm gonna have, Ashley. <laughs> I don't have my list of going down. I'm gonna have Ashley talk about drug-free Puna Gorda here really quick. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Ashley Chandler. I'm executive director for Drug-Free Puna Gorda. It, we are a nonprofit substance abuse prevention coalition. Um, our mission is to provide prevention programs in our local schools. And I'm here to tell you that prevention works. Um, Archway has been a key partner in um, and participating in our city coalition. They've provided grants for us for programs like DeFi, um, Drug Free Youth, which this is an incentive program for the youth in our area to um, be and remain drug free. Uh, they show us that they are drug free. They get a little um, an ID with their photo on it, and they can take it around to our local business partners and get free discounts and perks through those partners that we've created those relationships with. Um, they have, Archway has helped us implement projects like visioning boards, um, school prevention placemats, online plain view programs, and countless other successful programs that we would not have been able to execute without them as a supporter. Dan and Jan uh, volunteer their time to help us at school dances, fundraisers, community events. We have special summer programs that we like to implement to keep those relationships with those kids that we, that we see and talk to throughout the entire school year. We think it's very important to maintain the bonds that we have with them to continue a positive and healthy relationship. Um, so Archway is invested in recovery Drug Free Punta Gorda is invested in prevention. However, our partnership has offered a different perspective at our coalition meetings and throughout the community, um, showing that even though we are both on opposite ends of the spectrum, we both are, are assisting our beloved community and its current and future population. Um, at this event, Archway will generously be giving all the sales from the, Hope, the Helicopter Drop Hope Fund that we collected through Drug Free Punta Gorda right back to our coalition. 100% of the profit from that comes right back to us. So they're one of our number one supporting organizations that we have, and we're so grateful for, for them for everything that they do for us. Um, if it weren't for them, we would not have been able to develop the DeFi program, which we have 60% of our students at Punta Gorda Middle School are D5 members. Um, and I believe that about um, 20 to 30% of our high schoolers, we're still kind of working on that, are D5 members. So we know that they are drug free because they do have to take a drug screen in order to qualify to be D5 members. Um, Archway is a key asset in both time and money to make our prevention program successful. And we are so grateful for our partnership for them and for you as the community to uh, continue to support us throughout our journey in prevention. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ashley. Next up is Tara. Tara is the executive director of Valerie's House and she's gonna talk a little bit about the work that they do. Thank you. Uh, so my name is Tara Zages. I am the executive director of Valerie's House in Charlotte County. And Valerie's House um, provides grief counseling for children and families who have lost a loved one. And you're probably wondering what in the world the grief counseling has to do with Archway Institute, right? So 40 to 50% of our families have lost a family member, primarily a parent, to addiction. Um, and if you think about that, um, it's rather startling. Um, many of our families come to us because they've lost somebody to addiction, but what you don't realize is many of our teens or many of our surviving caregivers are actually in active addiction as well. 
So what we do is not only do we care for them in terms of their grief, but we also rely on Archway for their resources to care for the addiction part of that as well. Um, so Dan and Jen have been very generous in donating their resources back to us. Um, so we value their partnership, their resources, um, and any of their services that they can donate back to us. Uh, it's been a very valuable tool to us to be able to not only care for the grief that we have um, with our families, but to be able to also deal with the addiction portion of this as well. As we all know, uh, trauma and loss is a huge factor in addiction. And uh, we have a tendency to go back to that as well with the remaining caregivers. So Archway has been, um, I can say, very relevant to um, caring for the surviving caregivers in our families. Thank you. Thank you, Tara. Yeah, the first two really were prevention matters. Like we are helping to prevent the future substance use in, in the community. So it is really a full circle um, job, I think. Uh, next up is Sheriff Permel. He's going to talk a little bit about uh, Charlotte County Sheriff's Office, their partnership with Charlotte Behavioral Health Care um, and the Drug Addiction Recovery Initiative. You guys know, you may know, that 50% of the proceeds from today go to support that initiative. So he's going to talk a little bit about that. Thank you, Emily. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. You know, I've been in this business a long time and I've seen how substance use has ruined lives, it's ruined families, neighborhoods, communities. And when I became sheriff, I wanted to do something different because I knew we weren't gonna lock away the problem. So I had a good friend over at Charlotte Behavioral, Vicki Scanlon, who's the CEO there. And I reached out to her and I said, Vicki, I wanna try something different. I wanna do an addiction recovery initiative. Basically it's a non-traditional entry for recovery. Normally when law enforcement gets involved, it's because you got locked up, you ended up in court, and you got court ordered treatment. Well, we wanted to try and do something on the front end. So what we started was the drug recovery initiative and basically we put it out there and we said, when you're ready, because as you know, when you're dealing with addiction, it's up to that person as to when they're going to get help. They have to hit rock bottom. But we want them to know that we are here to help. We're not just here to lock you up, we are here to help you. So when you reach that point and you decide, I need help, you can reach out to any one of my deputies on the street. You can call us up and ask us to come pick you up. You can walk into any one of my offices and you can say, here, here's my drugs. I want help. And we will take you to a recovery facility. No charges. The drugs will be taken and destroyed. And Archway and Dan and Jan came in at a perfect time too because you know, one of the issues we had is we didn't want money to be a factor in somebody getting recovery. So we needed to make sure that we can keep this program sustainable. So when they heard about the program, they actually approached us and said, hey, we want to help. Do you want help? And we're like, absolutely. So with their donations and you guys, your support here today, we can make sure that money is not a roadblock for somebody getting the help they need. And we're doing a really great job and all the partnerships of all the people you see up here, plus additional partnerships of other organizations out in the community. Um, our Attorney General, Ashley Moody, was here a couple weeks ago at a, an event with me and a report had just come out in reference to drug overdoses. And Florida, Florida's numbers came way down compared to the rest of the nation. And Charlotte County led the state by a decrease of 34%. Wow. And it's because of all the partnerships, it's all the proactivity here in the county, it's all the friendships that have been put together amongst the organizations. And we have so many different doors somebody can go to enter into a program. And we're gonna continue that, and we have so many additional programs and we're gonna keep doing it until we can 
we can say that we truly put a dent in addiction. So thank you, everybody. God bless. Thank you, Sheriff. Okay, last but not least, we have Mark and Jennifer who are going to speak about Kathy's House, which is a new initiative um, in Charlotte County that we're pretty excited about. Thank you, Emily. Uh, my name is Mark Fitzsimmons, and I, I'm a member of the board of Archway. And recently, I'm privileged to have become a member of the board of Kathy's Place also. Kathy, the Archway is one of the things that Archway has always reached out and wanted to do is to volunteer in the community with other organizations that have the common goals of helping people in recovery and helping the community become a safer place by doing so. About a year ago, uh, we learned that uh, uh, Kathy's Place was an idea that we, people were going forward with and there were a bunch of meetings and everything and today Kathy's Place is a corporation it's a 501c3, it's up and running, and what it is is gonna be a, a recovery community organization where people in recovery can go to a certain place and get directed to all the different types of care they need, which is very much uh, uh, consistent with the goals of Archway. And with that, I'm gonna introduce you to Jennifer Kozako. She is the person who is now uh, the operational person at, at Kathy's Place. We have a lot of work still to do, but she's doing a great job, and she's going to tell you a little bit about the story of Kathy's Place. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Emily. My name is Jennifer Kazako. Um, I'm one of the founders of Kathy's Place of Charlotte County. Um, we are a recovery community organization, and we're really excited to get implemented within the Charlotte County community. Um, so what our vision is, is to be a community center for individuals who are struggling with substance use disorder and mental health disorders. Um, a place that they could come to and they could get provided that peer support like Emily talked about. Um, you know, I'm on my way of becoming a certified peer. Um, I'm hoping that we could become a training facility to train peers. Um, that's just some of the visions we have for um, Kathy's Place. Um, and we want to be able to provide hope. Um, our mission statement is to be a beacon of hope for those on the recovery journey. Um, is it that they are looking to get a job, you know, helping them fill out a resume, helping them provide um, resources to different employers within the community that do give second chances? Um, because coming into recovery can be very overwhelming. Um, it can be, the pressure can be very high um, I am a woman with long-term recovery. Um, next Wednesday, hopefully, I will be celebrating seven years in recovery. And, you know, sometimes sitting up here, it almost feels like imposter syndrome. I keep saying that because um, I can't believe the life that I get to live today. You know, sitting here in front of all of you, I would have never thought in a million years that I would be talking about recovery and what recovery has done for me in my life. Um, to have the courage to speak about it today. Um, I never thought that that would be me. Um, and so Kathy's Place, I want to just share a couple of words just about who Kathy was. Um, Kathy was my sponsor. Um, she moved down here four years ago, four or five years ago, um, and I asked her to sponsor me. She, she was picking up her 33 years and literally spoke for two sentence, like spoke two sentences, and I went, I want what she has. Um, she was a very strong woman, um, and she, she just had this light and energy in her that I can be her. You know, I can do what she does. Um, and she came down to Florida and couldn't believe that there wasn't the resources for Charlotte County. And um, when she passed two and a half years ago, uh, that's how Kathy's Place got started. Um, how do we continue her legacy um, within our community? And so that's why it's called Kathy's Place, to continue providing that hope to others who are on the recovery journey and hope to be a safe place for people to come and, and build a new pathway for their recovery. But that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer and Mark. And thank, actually, let's give our whole panel a round of applause.
I want to make sure I say these these other statistics, or else Dan might get get mad at me at the end. Yeah. <laughs> I saw you, you were probably looking at it. Um, so Archway has been able to give out over $100,000 in grants and scholarships just here in Charlotte County over the last 10 years. So that's something to celebrate. So those are scholarships to get people through the doors of a recovery house, to get people access to treatment, to counseling services, to things like that. But they're also grants to our community partners to support the full continuum of recovery, as I like to say. Um, I will say too, I, I might be biased, but when I come to this event, it is amazing to see so many community partners and so many community members, and also our community business businesses come into this space all working together to support recovery. And that's special because that doesn't happen everywhere. Um, that's why overdose rates are growing down. I do believe that. So. Thank you all so much for your support because you guys are the ones that are making this this possible. We appreciate you. Um, I'm going to dismiss our panel and then Jan and I are going to do some awards. But thank you. Thank you. Another round of applause.